Welcome to Decker Tech. I'm Aaron Decker, and today we're doing a guide for Magnus. Uh, I know Sylvie was up next on the list, but wasn't able to make enough uh, video content to get everything done for her, so we're going to go with Magnus. Uh, we are redoing Magnus. I did a previous video, but that is, you know, early access. This is now live. Changes, small changes have been made, but mostly we have to go over the perks. And uh, I'm able to. I'm going to be putting the the starting deck and the final deck all in one video for everyone, so that we have a, a better resource available to us. So Sylvie's still top of the list with all the new characters, but I do have the content available for that team that Zek was playing with. So we're going to go through them first. Uh, well, when when I don't have uh, the content ready. So Magnus, the um, the main goal of Magnus here is a frontliner. Uh, you can play him in some other positions. This video will be. Sp Specifically talking about Magnus as a frontline tank and uh, kind of sort of debuffing speed manipulation sort of guy. Um, there are other ways to play Magnus. Uh, I might touch on him a little bit here. For the most part, we'll just stick to to the, the default role for him. And maybe down the line, we'll do other guides for other versions of him. And uh, yeah, Magnus, uh, even though he's just one of the starting characters, he's one of the few starting characters that you will take all the way up to M16. He is a very solid uh member of your team at all at all levels of play um uh, and you're just going to be him in the front line and uh yeah so let's start with his talents here he starts with start a combat gain to reinforce now this is very important uh just to make sure that you don't take too much heat in the first round from all this physical damage it also makes it so magnus when you aren't playing him as a front line is good in the very back line so those snipe attacks from archers and uh snipers and assassins and stuff but like I said, mainly keeping him up front here. So we're going to play into him as a tank. So we're going to go down basically this right side here where we're getting a defensive card, increases resistances, defense mastery, defense cards cost less, uh, valiant defender, defense cards draw our team cards, also more block charges, kind of a big deal. And tireless is just basic energy regen. The reason we pick up tireless is not necessarily because one regen is awesome, which it is, but because we're not doing damage. By the end of the this version, Magnus is here to just soak hits protect the team and mainly debuff the enemy team so your team does more damage magnus contribution is vulnerable and uh we'll kind of get into that as we look at his starting deck and or the modifications i have made to it so the first thing you want to type in when you're making a magnus deck is vulnerable i can type right vulnerable uh here i'm on a low enough difficulty that rares exist uh and this 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 it's it's pink, but it's here because it's a ra upgraded rare. Anyway, you type in vulnerable, and uh, you get all these cards, and you can see most of the good ones are taken. You're gonna add all the piercing howls you can afford. These are pretty pricey, so if you're on a budget, uh, beware. This guide uh, I'm trying to tailor it to all difficulties, so you might have more shards than what I have. You might have less. I'll try to talk about all those instances. In this case, if you're short on funds. Maybe skip the Piercing Howl just because it's 200 shards. It's really fantastic, but uh, it's it's pricey. All this other stuff we can't really we don't really want to play. One, they're melee attacks, and two, they cost so much energy. Two, four, five, three. Like these are, we need that energy to do other things like protect our team. And then these intimidates. Uh, you can see I did not upgrade the intimidates. Uh, usually you'd probably go with the yellow intimidate, which has one more mark is really the only benefit, but that can add up on a team that's doing a lot of, uh, repeat attacks or multi-hit attacks. The reason I don't have it upgraded on this team specifically is I'm doing a dark team, which Mark has no effect on. So my team doesn't care about Mark. I didn't pick up any Mark perks and I'm not upgrading my intimidates. Saves me a little bit of shards, but overall it's a very cheap upgrade to go 30 shards to get this to uh, the yellow. I recommend the yellow version instead of the blue just because of the energy cost. Uh, early on, you're not going It's It's hit or miss on if you have enough energy to do things. And with um, Magnus, it's more important to play out all your cards than to, to get this plus one more vulnerable, in my opinion. Because there are times where you have to choose between a blue Intimidate or protecting your team and you really wish man i wish i had a yellow intimidate and and this protect my team card so yes you can get away with blues but it's a lot easier and safer to go with yellows um impale is very playable but you would you would get rid of it fairly soon uh it's just 
The fact that it is front monster and chain means it's only guaranteed to hit the first two monsters, whereas cards like Piercing Howl will hit all of them. And then cards like Intimidate, you can target wherever you want. Like, often the elite in the group is in the back line, so you want to target the back line, right? That's, that's why we're sticking with Intimidates and Howls. Now, Magnus does start with a Barricade. You're going to want to upgrade that to the Reinforced version. Uh, this is as a frontline tank. That is one of your main roles to make maintain the the reinforced buff on the team so that they're taking less uh, damage. The this piercing damage and this that's that's usually going to get your backliners killed by these those assassins or those archers I was telling you about that say target backline or target weakest or lowest HP. Like there's a lot of things that are intended to kill your squishy guys, and all of those are physical damage that your reinforce will protect them. So you're trying to keep this reinforced buff up on your whole team or at least on the key targets. And part of that is, I don't have it here on the starting deck, but maybe I should. Repair armor. I have it in act two in this version. I think I, there's no reason. I think the reason I haven't done it is because I want to talk about fast strikes and I have this as a reminder about the starting cards. But usually I'll pick up one or two repair armors Usually in Act 1, I'll get the upgraded version if I can afford it for the zero cost. Energy, as you uh, may know, is a very big point in this game. Uh, you want to be able to play all your cards because a played card is more effective than a non-played card. Go figure. So you'll see me picking up uh, one or two repair armors and or you can get them in early divinations or, uh, or combat rewards fairly often. Um, I wouldn't go over two or three of them. Uh, you'll eventually trim down to one by the end game, but this will stick with you most of the game because it's a targeted reinforce and it dispels Mark. Uh, there are very few fights that cr dispelling crack makes a difference, but there are plenty of fights where dispelling Mark is a big deal. So you don't want, like, th if this Mark stacks up on any of your heroes, bad things happen. Usually your front line takes a lot of beating, so this you'll just use this to basically dispel yourself for zero. And then when you're not using it to dispel, it's basically just another intercept. Because you see intercept, zero cost, grant five. Would you look at this? Zero cost, grant five. So repair armor is just a strict upgrade to intercept. So if you're running intercept and not repair armor and you have shards, upgrade your intercept to repair armors. Enough said. And they're both defense cards, so there's, there's, there's no downside. Uh, so what do we got here? We Captain's Howl is the best card in the game fight me for that uh intercepts you'll keep for a bit they'll eventually get rid of but the nice thing about an intercept versus the defense cards so um is it just called defense right yeah defend uh magna starts with four defense they cost one for 14 block yes 14 block is more than five block by a decent amount but you can only target yourself with it it costs one energy and both of these scale at the same rate. When you start getting perks or items that increase your block, you can see with me at max perks, this is 14 to 23, which is significantly different than 14 to five. So maybe early on in the game, if you're dying, keep a defender two, but by the time you start getting any amount of perks, these these defense are just not worth it. They're, they're not worth the energy, and mainly it's just the lack of flexibility because you should, with Intimidates, one side effect of these is they apply sight and with the sight you can look at the enemies and be like oh where are they targeting their attacks and since magnus is the one applying sight you can be like oh where like you if you're scared of a certain monster you're like who is he going to hit this turn just put the intimidate on them you'll see who they're attacking middle monster fastest hero stuff like that and you just put it the intercept on that target or the repair armor which you know we talked about earlier so these these targeted blocks are much more effective than the the self blocks because nine times out of ten I want to put the defense somewhere else and I can't so that's why we cut the defense uh, enrage best card for warriors you will take every single one of these if you could have fifty of them in your deck you could probably run fifty of them in your deck I'd probably stop at about twenty maybe fifteen. But uh, there's really no downside to picking this card. So we're going to keep it. There's no need to upgrade it because both of the upgrades are damage oriented and Magnus is not going to be our damage dealer uh, for the majority of the time. We'll have a couple attack cards by the end, but 
he's not the one we're stacking all the, the buffs onto to make the, the enemy team explode. Uh, fast Strikes. These, um, they're an okay filler card. You'll... It's, it's nice to have a couple attacks, but honestly, Magnus is not here to do damage. In Act 1, you will want to keep a couple Fast Strikes or some Rens. Uh, I would suggest, if you can afford it, the upgraded Rens that target monsters. But it, it's nice to have a couple attacks, but the problem is Fast Strikes says Front Monster. So you have... It's, again, that whole thing with the Defend. The target you want to hit, you can't necessarily hit, so the Fast Strike just ends up being a dead card. Specifically in Act 1... Yager is a backline, uh, uh, what's the word? Boss. Elder Dryad, backline boss. Belfir, backline boss. Tree, backline, you, you get the picture? All of these backline bosses you can't target with his fast strike if they summon any minions in front of them. And, uh, three of those will summon minions in, to, to prevent this fast strike. So that's why I recommend if you're going to keep an attack, keep the Rens and upgrade them to target monster so that you can actually effectively hit what needs to die. There's also a couple dryad fights, dryad fights in Act 1 that are, are really rough and you need to, need to bring down those healers. So the, the targeted attacks are much stronger than these front monster or front block kind of stuff. Um, this Intimidate, uh, I, I just left it here as a reminder that both, both are viable. I usually run yellow. Uh, I, div I did a divination for this one. I, I just didn't flip it so I could talk about it. Um, Piercing Howls, yes please, yes please. Take it off. So, part of survival is removing debuffs. Uh, if you have the shards, upgrade it to Dispel 3 random. I feel like I've talked about this recently. I didn't do a Magnus video recently, have I? Anyway, Dispel 3, uh, no worry about the random card because you'll just cast this card last. Most of the time, you won't you'll draw it and not need it. And that's okay because the times that you do need it, you are going to love and enjoy paying one energy to clear all the bleed off yourself. You know, all the all the slows, the shackle, stuff like that. So shake it off, very good card. You can get away with not having it if you have Sharpie most of the time, but there's, there's no downside. Like the opportunity cost of drawing shake it off and not needing it is a small price to pay for the times that you do need that dispel. And honestly, most of the time your healer will rather spend their dispel magic on someone else if they know that you can just draw your shake it off. Uh, and then we already talked about barricade a little bit. Starting card, fantastic card. Uh, you'll keep at least one of them to the end of the game, maybe two of them, because uh, it's a, a two cost block all. It gives reinforced buff. You want to maintain the buff on everyone as long as you can and eventually it'll come down to a one cost because it's a defense card so it'll trigger a lot of your defense synergy and uh it's just it's a coverall so between this and your targeted blocks you can be really good at perfectly blocking the enemy damage because the random hits or the aoe block hits this this barricade will cover and then the ones that you know where they're going to hit you can target with intercepts or repair armors uh yeah that's his starting deck. And now, if you look through here, um, once you have a starting deck in mind or you have an idea of what deck you're going to play in mind, that's a good time to talk about perks. So we're looking through here. We're block. We're vulnerable. Sight's not really a big deal. The the mark is a, is a big deal. Uh, slashing, we're not going to keep that. Reinforce, that's a big deal. Bleed, we're going to get rid of that eventually. Don't worry about that. So let's take a look at his perks. And I have been he hearing a lot of feedback from y'all, and I appreciate it greatly. Uh, I asked for the best way to support me if you want to see more of this content is feedback, be it criticism and things you'd like to see or things you liked about the video, telling me I'm a great person, you know, stuff like that. Uh, and then also helping me get to a thousand subscribers by making sure your friends are subscribed. Those are the, the big ways that will make it so I can keep making these videos. And I have... 14 other characters to make after this one. So, plus all the other content I want to do about uh, perks and starting teams and stuff like that. Anyway, I forgot to mention that, so I brought it up now. Perks, 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 perks. So, the main thing for uh, warriors that are frontline warriors is this this block. So, we're going to get deep in this. Even though this node is, is a weird node, you just want to go as deep as you can into this block. And then remember... Vulnerable and reinforced were big deals for Magnus, so 
charge is vulnerable, charge is reinforced. If you can convince some of your teammates to pick up these other two perks, that'd be great. This one says reinforce is more powerful. All it costs is one of your teammates going three. Zek is my main man to pick that up. And then vulnerable stacks to 12 and decays slower. This is fantastic. It's, it's a lot easier to maintain max stacks if they only decay one, one per turn instead of two per turn. And again, only costs three, and suddenly your team is, is doing more damage. So have someone else pick this up. You can't pick both up. So since you need the plus charges on vulnerable and the plus charges on reinforce, you have to have someone else pick them up for you. And these, these are the main perks that you're required for a, a Magnus. Uh, this one is just a general draw an extra card at the beginning. Uh, the, the more consistent your turn one is, the better. I recommend this on every single character. You might play around with this one inspire equals two, but you're definitely not going to do it for your, your character that's going to go first. And Magnus is all it, like, unless you're pairing Magnus with Andrin, he's going to go first. And even then, sometimes you might artificially slow Andrin down so that Magnus is going faster. Like, you want Magnus to be the main front man doing the things first. Uh, yeah, where are we at? So, defenses, and then general here. So, you want him to go first. So, speed is of the essence. Uh, you have a lot of howls that slow the enemy team down. That helps your whole team go before the enemies. So slow charges. Yes, please. Uh, late game, you are going to get a card that has fast on it. So I, I could be persuaded to get this, pick this up. Uh, most of the time, it's not going to make too big of a deal. You will get some items that also have fast. So this is a strong pickup. Uh, energy is always good. I would suggest you really only need these first two. You don't really need to spend three for... Uh, this uh this one right here on round two gain an energy uh that's not gonna hurt you by all means more energy is, is more energy i'd recommend at least getting two points i only did one because i was screwing around uh, on this run uh a second point is is usually pretty good here most teams is going to benefit from mark a lot so magnus should pick up this mark and then maybe one of these secondary ones where uh specifically the hero is immune to mark it's really nice if your tank is not is taking less damage and uh, this is a really good way to do it so uh i was just play testing and, and messing things messing around with things i don't regret not having this but it definitely hurt my game not having this immune to mark so you already apply mark charges through intimidate so you might as well get the defensive thing right here this only costs you four points total to become immune to mark very well worth it uh, you don't need sight unless you're helping out a sight team. Uh, you don't apply barrier. And personally, like, shards and golds, just, just fit it to whatever is for you. For me, when I'm playing on the higher difficulties, I love to dig down all the way deepest shards as I can because good cards are good. Uh, and then survival, you have enough hit points that resistances is, is your preferred choice 99% of the time. But you can, of course, play with those as you see fit. Mainly, it's you want all these speed ones. You want as much energy as you can afford. You want this mark. And you want this whole area right here. Uh, you really don't need the fortify ones. I'm not really impressed by those. But you will play a card that has fortified eventually. You're not going to want taunt. Magnus is not a taunt tank. Mm. Taunt tank. Some really weird words you can get with that tongue twister. Anyway, um... He, since he does AOE block, you don't want him to be absorbing all the random hits. You want those to be evenly spread along the team. Uh, yeah, and that should be everything for perks. Now let's get into what his deck looks like in Act 2. While I'm looking there, please let me know what it is I'm not talking about that you'd like to see or any other questions you have. I will do my best to answer them in this video, in the comments section or in future videos. Uh, here is his Act 2 deck. I need to go through this interface because I can't think with the other one here. So, the repair armors are here. Like I said, I just didn't pick any up. I, I think I got like two from awards and crafted ones. So, repair armor is pretty nice. You, three might be overkill. I think two is a good starting point and eventually you'll pair it down to one by the end game. But it... It's not a bad card. Like I said, it's better than intercepts. You can see the intercepts are gone now. I just straight upgraded them to repair armors. We kept the howls. We now have wolf guard. That's our talent card. Still have the barricades. These wrens 
uh, if I had more shards, I would replace them. And what I would replace them with are either Entrench. This one, you won't really be able to cast very consistently until halfway through Act 2 when you hit level 3. Uh, and you get Defense Mastery that brings this cost down by 1. But of the Entrenches, this is the best one because it adds that Fortify to everyone. Which is, if you, if you play a lot of Entrenches, it might very well be worth picking up that one Fortify stack on the perks that I mentioned. Uh, because this helps smooth out the damage you take over several turns. The reason I say it's not really needed is because you'll cast Entrench like every other turn, so it, it should be consistent enough you don't need that Fortify stack, but don't be afraid to just pick up that, that perk if you have extra perks. So either Entrench or the other one is Push Forward. I should have just typed it in. Push Forward here. And this is where that Speed Talent I was coming in, talking about comes in. I recommend Blue just because Magnus doesn't need to be faster than he already is, and that's what the yellow one does, is everyone on your team gets one fast and you get three. This does give a little more block to the team, but it's so negligible, it's it's two block. That, that's not even worth... I don't even know why I'm talking about it. You want the blue one. So your whole team gets a little faster. This is without the fast perk, so that would be three total for the team. So that way, between Howl and Push Forward... So Howl slows down the enemies, and any of the Howls slow down the enemies, and Push Forward will speed up your team. If you draw one or the other, your team's probably going to go first. If you draw both, they're definitely going before the enemy. And that's why it's important for Magnus to go and be the first one to act in combat. And we'll talk more about that with his items and such. Uh, which I didn't talk about in the last town, but I don't think I had any. Um, where are we at here? And I don't think there's any other defense cards that I missed here. Yep. Stockade is a fun card. Uh, don't You don't have to turn it down, but I wouldn't craft it. Uh, I've very rarely regretted a stockade, but it's also normally gets cut in the next town <laughs> after I pick it up. Like, I'll pick it up in the middle of an act and be like, yeah, this is fun. And then at the next town, I go to cut a card. I'm like, what do I cut? Well, it's got to be stockade. So it's just because barricade applies reinforce, push forward applies fast, and Entrench applies Fortify, which are all three of those much more important to you than Thorns or Vitality. So, sorry, it's just, it's not going to happen. Uh, yeah. Let's talk about his equipment. I don't think we talked about that yet. So, with, let's talk about Sharpie first. Sharpie is arguably the best pet for a frontliner or someone that's supposed to go first. And the reason is, Dispel every turn and gain fast every turn. So the Dispel every turn helps keep your frontliner clean of debuffs so that if, uh, you know, he's taking less damage overall and if you need to clear like a Decay or or a Shackle, you 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 don't have this big buildup of debuffs that your Dispel cards have to dig past. So if you're, if you're staying relatively free of Curses, it's a lot easier to remove the Shackle at the correct time because there's just so much less to dig through. I said that twice because I don't know why. Um, and then the the gain fast makes it so that you're continually going before your team so that you can get that block up because block is wasted if you go after the enemy. Block is 100% useless. <laughs> well, not anyway, it's mainly useless if you're going after the enemy does their damage. Uh, so you want to be going before the enemies every single turn and Sharpie helps you maintain that speed. And then to make sure you're going first on the very first turn, you want one of these two. I have both because Forest Crown is a very high chance drop from the tree. So you can plan, you can hope for it, but basically plan on, I think it's like eight times out of 10, maybe nine times out of 10 Forest Crown drops. Uh, of course, every time I'm going for a high score, it doesn't drop. So it's, you know, take with it how you will on how your luck turns each day. But I got this from the boss, and in the next town, I got this happened to be in the shop, and I bought it. Uh, once you have Cloak of Speed, you don't need Force Crown anymore. But you can't really reliably get Cloak of Speed. So Force Crown, you kind of aim and plan for. And then once you have the Cloak of Speed, you can replace this ring slot later. Uh, but in general, you just want plus speed, or at the beginning of combat, gain fast. And then you don't have to worry about that anymore, because Sharpie will continue to make sure that you maintain at least one stack of fast. This says one, but with my perks, it's two. So it's equivalent to these, I think. Nope. These are just showing two when they're, they're actually three as well. Oh, I just, I don't have that fast perk. Never mind. 
You should have the fast perk. I didn't in this run. Uh, where are we at? Yep. You, of course, always want all resistance. But speed is honestly Magnus' most important stat. Is making sure he goes before the enemies so that you can get those, those AoE blocks, those self blocks out before the enemy does their turn. Uh, tr levels we're just gonna we're just gonna be going down the right side so there's nothing to see here let's go to uh act four so in act four we have now oh i keep going to the wrong screen here you can see i've picked up enrages every time i can i've come down to one repair armor i'm still running intimidates sometimes i feel bad about drawing them and uh, you want your deck to be as consistent as possible. So, one card to consider is Battle Plan. If, if you're really worried about getting the, the correct hand, it does cost you one energy. You'll get, get it back the next turn. But the nice thing is you can dig three cards deep, which is really only two cards deeper because this is taking up one of the card slots, um, and kind of craft your starting hand. The problem with things like Battle Plan is that Defense Mastery does not affect cards that you draw in your turn, only the cards that started in your hand. So it is kind of a hit energy-wise because not only do you have to pay an energy for battle plan, you also don't get the energy discount on any cards you draw that you're digging for. So don't plan on digging for an entrench because you're not going to be able to cast it because it's going to cost full price and you paid one extra right up the butt. Uh, right up front but enrages can kind of help counter that out so it's 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 kind of hit or miss but the idea is you want to get valiant defender out as soon as possible so that you can play your defense cards to give your team inspire and then any of these defense cards should hopefully be costing one less so barricade should be one push forward should be one entrench should be four and you'll play one or two of these you'll throw in a repair armor if you have it and that'll give your team lots of inspire and survival and then you'll also be playing these Howls uh, to get the enemy team max vulnerable uh, so your team's doing more damage. So as you can see, depending on what we draw, it's going to be very energy uh, heavy. Sometimes people don't run Entrench just because it costs too much energy. Uh, but And that's why I, I normally don't run Battle Plan, but it is, it is a decent card. And it's very, like, you should try it at least once and see how you feel about it. Uh, it's very hit or miss on whether it, it's fruitful, uh, though. Uh, where are we at here? Piercing Howl's talent card. It's a fun one. It's it's not a defense card itself, so it doesn't get reduced, sadly. Same thing with Wolfguard. But they're both... I enjoy them both enough. Of the two, Wolfguard is probably stronger than Valiant Defender, to be honest, just because Valiant Defender is random. Yes, it gives plus six block charges, but... In the grand scheme of things, plus six block isn't as powerful as the Inspire and the random 24 to a hero. So, uh, which is also buffed by the plus six charges after you play it. So it's it's a large chunk of block that'll be randomly distributed. But again, it's random. So you play this early and then play your repair armor last to kind of fill in the gaps if you still need some block somewhere. Uh, and then I think the last card we haven't talked about here is Carnage. So the reason Carnage is here is because if you look, all these vulnerable cards vanish. Uh, Demoralizing Shout, if he has it, vanish. I don't recommend it just because it's high energy. This is better on a Bree than a Magnus. Uh, Impale vanishes, Intimidate vanishes. Ground Slam does not, but it's a three cost attack. Intimidates vanish, Howls vanish. You getting the theme here? Thunder Armor doesn't, but it's a three cost attack. This one actually I could see an argument for a yellow Sunder over a yellow Carnage. Uh, the reason I like Carnage more is because it's fun. <laughs> the problem is it's random. So actually, now that I look at this, I, I take back everything I've said. Yellow Sunder armor better than yellow Carnage. Yes. Uh, I'm just used to playing Carnage from the old days because I would be running a team that has Bless. And I would just incidentally have like... 30 bless on Magnus, so this is doing 60-something damage, which on my non-damage dealer isn't much, but it adds up. Uh, and Sunder Armor was not in such a good place. It didn't have the uh, the vulnerable before, I don't think, so, or it just didn't exist. So, I take back everything I said. Sunder Armor. Bam. Add that. Delete that. Oh, deck's so much prettier. See, even I have to make card evaluations on the fly. I, I can get to the right screens, I promise. 
So yeah, that's what I would consider a, a good final deck for Magnus. Uh, if I were to draw more Enrages, I'd probably cut an Intimidate. Uh, eventually maybe cut the Barricade? Nope. The Repair Armor. Problem is you want to make sure you still have anywhere from four to six cards that don't vanish. And as you can tell, I only have a couple here. Repair Armor, Barricade, Push Forward, and Sunder. And, oh, and Entrench. Okay, I got enough. I got enough. That's what, five? <laughs> so you want anywhere from four to six. Uh, you're usually going to draw on average six cards on any given team. And uh, you'll, for the final boss, have, you know, space for one or two injuries from sad and stuff. Or martyrdom and stuff like that. So you want to consistently be able to draw your whole hand plus any injuries that are given to you. But you don't want to waste card draws by having too few. Uh, yeah, I try to make this uh, quick and dirty because this is a recreation. I also have been trying to do my best to take in um, the the feedback I've gotten on the last video. So uh, please, I like I haven't had a chance to, to do it all yet, but we're working on it. Uh, I'm trying to just going to sit here for a second, make sure we talked about everything. Again, this is a frontline Magnus. He does have a couple other roles to play around with. Some of them are Mimi. Some of them are legit. Uh, for the most part, though, Magnus is a solid shoe-in for the front line uh, as a frontline tank. And honestly, for when we're talking about team synergies, this is something people requested. Uh, where, what, who would I pair him with? Anyone. Magnus is the epitome of a generalized, always good hero. Uh, I can't think of a single team I wouldn't pair him with. Uh, of the other heroes, Andrin's the only one that comes to mind that you have to do anything weird where you have to make sure Andrin's slower than Magnus. Uh, even then, it's okay for Andrin to be faster than Magnus if Andrin's not your main damage dealer. Because, uh, yeah, all Magnus is doing is applying vulnerable to the enemy team, slowing the enemy team, speeding your team up, and protecting your team. So, those are all just generalized things. You, uh, He pairs well with... Any of the healers, yeah, I'm sorry, I, I brainstopped that. I was going to say, like, targeted healing or AoE healing. Like, I have Nezglek as my healer, who is a, who is a who is an even heal. Like, he doesn't have any targeted heals. All of my Nezglek healing in this game is uh, based on his passive, which is just, I can't target it anywhere. But even then, Magnus helps smooth out the damage so that um, these, these uh, things like Wolf Guard and Repair Armor You'll just put them on whoever's lowest on your team. Like, so even if you know your frontliner is going to get hit, but your backliner is at half hit points, I'm just going to throw Wolf Guard and Repair Armor on the, the backliner because I can allow my front, my other guys to take damage and to dip a little because I have Nezglect as my healer doing uh, an even heal. If I had like a targeted healer, I might do things a little differently. But overall, Magnus is just really good at smoothing out the damage intake for your team. Uh, and this Wolf Guard is really good at doing that for someone that's fallen critical or you know is going to take a big hit from like, say, Yager. He'll target the lowest hit point target. So you know, hey, throw Wolf Guard on that person and you can protect them with it. Uh, everything burns. Your, your first turn is the most important turn. That's why that Inspire perk is good. You're going to try to enrage through. You play your enrages first. Uh, dig for what you want. You're aiming to get at least one of these howls off and or a push forward. So your team's going first. And either this barricade, and don't be afraid to run two barricades. This barricade or this repair armor to make sure reinforce is on whoever's going to get hit by physical attacks in that first round. And uh, some sort of vulnerable application that doesn't burn so you can maintain it for the final boss. Uh, items. I think that's the last thing. Um... Kept the Cloak of Speed. It was it's it's the best one. Sharpie is the best. Uh, Warrior Code is really nice because it does the plus vulnerable charges. I only have this Iron Kanabo because in this run I was also unlocking pets, so I went to the uh, the the Goblin Encampment or whatever that is that gives this. But plus plus vulnerable charges is why I have it. This Tyrant Necklace is just kind of a filler. The plus fortified charge was very nice because I didn't have the perk, but usually you can have the perk to get around that. Uh, items. So, Inspire. Uh, 
his starting weapon is one of the best weapons for him for most of the game, just because it's something he can do to help the team. You don't have any. You don't have any books. Golden Laurel is a is a decent one to pick up on him because since you go first, this this whole every turn thing you you want the Golden Laurel on one of your fastest heroes and Magnus should be your fastest hero. So Golden Laurel is a good pick up there. So Inspire, Vulnerable. Uh, don't be afraid to pick up the the Nether Blade if you have something like Carnage, uh, because on hit applying Vulnerable. Even though it's only affecting one of your cards, sometimes that's enough. Especially since Carnage or uh, Sunder Armor is your your long fight option for like the Archon. This can be an okay pickup. But usually you're looking for Venom Fang or Iron Kanabo just because it does the, the plus vulnerable charges. So if no one else is on your team is using it, those are great. Uh, nope, nope, Rusty Armor. Nullifier, fantastic pickup, otherwise Warrior Code. I mean, really just looking for the things that uh, that we did as as a tank, like our role. Uh, fast shoes, fast cloak, fast armor. You don't want the negatives. You can't see it. I'm pointing at the screen. You guys can't see it. It's hilarious. Um, <laughs> the uh, Steadfast Boots. This one. I really love this one. So the nice thing about Steadfast Boots is immune to slow is... Shackle and slow are the two ways that Magnus will be the the last person to go, which means his block will be wasted. So you want to avoid those at all, in all possible cases. Uh, Shackle is hard to avoid, but you're going to try to work around that with dispels. But slow, there is one guaranteed spot where this is going to affect you, and that's the final fight at Archon, because you're going to be passing around the hot potato, and the hot potato says slow the target. So what's really nice is on the final fight, one, Magnus will always be going faster than Archon, so he's always using his block. Two, you can pass the extra hot potatoes to Magnus, because sometimes you have more potatoes than you need, or you don't. You can wait a turn or two. And since Magnus' deck should be fairly small, you can throw him a couple extra hot potatoes. He can sit on them for a couple turns and still guarantee draw them for to pass them back out again. And in the meantime, he's not affected by the slow that you're passing to him. So... Uh, I find Steadfast Boots is fantastic specifically for Archon Fight. And in general, it is just a, a high resistance plus speed equipment. So I would rate this as possibly better than the the, the, the Cloak here. I would say it's between Cloak of Speed and Steadfast Boots that are the best armor for Magnus. Uh, Red, Steel, sorry, Red Steel Cloak is in the competition because just because of immune to Mark. But you now have an option in your perks to be immune to Mark. So Red Steel Cloak just kind of goes down in value in general. Uh, yeah, that was, a, that was good. I like that thing. And then rings. We're just looking for stuff with high resistance or speed. Lapis necklace. You don't you don't need anything fancy here. I mean, I mean amulet of speed. We just want speed. Stimulant pills are okay. I they have speed on them, and we do fast charges, so they're not wrong, but I would rather... I kind of did these in the order of importance to me, and that's vulnerable, is, is the number one priority for Magnus. Uh, make sure you're getting to max stacks uh, at all times. I, I think I'm in about the babbly stages here. We're going to take a quick look at... Uh, make sure I didn't miss anything, and uh, I think we're about done here. Yeah, yeah. Let me know uh, what kind of questions you have. I appreciate uh, your support and, and listening here. Hopefully this is helpful. I will try to get the rest of these guys out as soon as possible. Uh, in the meantime, please uh, let me know what you liked, and I will catch you later. Peace.